My Gavan and Melanin, and well met indeed. I am Arachir Gala the head of the modding team behind Divide and Conquer, and welcome back to Divide and Conquer to continue on as Angmar. Angmar, Angmar, Angmar. I can't believe it's been a week since the last recording. How time is absolutely whistling by. Whistling. A oh, whistling. Uh, now, the campaign for Angmar has essentially turned on its head. We're now doing all right. We have got Captain Leguff over there, who's joining up with Zagher. Get ready for uh, who will then join up with Yagher, uh, and then together Zagher and Yagher will take back the town of Nokhbarachlor. Once we've taken Nokhbarachlor, we will head south and take the very important to the Breelanders town of Amunsul. Once we've taken Amunsul, we will then head west and return to Bree. Now I have a very important question for you, because um, owing to a bug in the testing group created um, either by my... Not a bug per se, but... An, 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 let me start again. My question is as follows. Amun Sul is a village, as many of you know. Um, it looks like this. Uh, it is actually a village. Now, the way that unique settlements work means that we cannot, without um, basically using up an... In no, if, in fact, we just can't. We cannot make that look unique all the way up through the levels. So, when, as soon as it upgrades to a town, no matter who owns it, it will just it will then just default back to that town's look. So if the orcs take it and turned it into a town, it would become an orc camp. If the northern Dunedain just hold it for the whole game and they upgraded it, it would just become a standard northern Dunedain town. And then so on and so forth. My question is as follows. At the moment, Amunsul is a village, right? It's not particularly useful owing to the fact that it stays at a village. The only people that get use out of it are the Northern Dunedain because I've made it so that they can build their training recruitment centre in villages. So they're the only nation in the game who can essentially build a barracks in a village. Everyone else can't. So the Northern Dunedain can use Amunsul but no one else can. But my question to you is this. Um, in the testing group recently, I forgot to make Amunsul one of the settlements that I lock and I raise the population. So someone was able to upgrade it and it turned it into a normal town. And it then got me thinking, well, should we allow that? So I, I might actually try and use the poll feature if I bloody well remember this time. And I'd quite like to ask the question is, do you care enough about the unique Amunsul settlement to keep it restricted? Or would you rather it had the potential to upgrade right up to a large city? So would you... So the, the thing here is if, if we then de-restrict it and it can upgrade, it will be a village for however long it's a village. would set the population really low, so it would take a long time to grow. But then it would grow. It would then become a town, a large town, a city and a large city. And it would look like whoever owns it. Or do you want to keep the custom settlement enough that you don't want Amunsul to ever grow? Now the thing with this is that if you play as anyone, absolutely anyone other than the Northern Dunedain, then you're probably going to want it to be able to grow. Because yes, it's a nice nod to the fact that it's a ruined watchtower, yada yada yada. But at the end of the day, you want it to actually be a useful settlement, given its central location in Eriador and the fact that it's a massive region. The earning potential here is really high if it grew in size. Or do you like the custom settlement enough? Now, the, to change the custom settlement, or not, sorry, to get like a reasoning behind why the custom settlement is changing, if we went down to Dunharrow, for example, wherein uh, Dunharrow, of course, is a unique geographical location. Whilst the image we have of Amun Sul is the one from the films where it's a very, very prominent hill standing alone amongst a sea of plains and nothingness, really Amun Sul is just a watchtower at the end of the line of hills that are the Weather Hills. So if it were to upgrade, you could very easily just say that the town was just built next to the watchtower. So the watchtower is still there, no longer used at all, and the town itself has been built up like either around the base of it or off, or just off away from the hills. But you could easily say that's why the watchtower is no longer there. But with places like Dunharrow, of course, that's a really unique geographical location with the steep cutting up the cliffs and um, and obviously the Dwimmer, the doors of the Dwimmerberg, whatever they're called. The door under the mountain, or the paths of the dead. So Dunher would be harder to say, oh, they just built the town at the base of the hill. Because I think it would be a little harder. Uh, and restrictions with the hobbits is purely to reflect the fact that hobbits are not an industrial people. They're not going for massive growth. They're going for peace and stability. So that's why they're restricted. But you could easily describe away why Amun Sul is no longer restricted. 
So I just wanted to start this because I did just want to ask you, and I apologise that it's taken a long time. If you aren't here for the mod at all, then you will have just skipped through this, and then feel free to write your vitriol in the comments. I'll delete them as they come up. But um, so please do either re leave your feedback as to what you would like, and indeed vote in the poll if I've remembered to put the poll up. Uh, do you want Amun Sul to lose its custom settlement but be able to upgrade, or the other way around, because that's the order it would actually be? So, would you like Amun Sul to be able to upgrade at the cost of the fact that once upgraded, it will no longer look like Amun Sul, or do you want it to remain as a village forever so that you can keep the custom settlement forever? Do let me know because I am actually coming around to the idea of actually just unrestricting it. It'd be a village for about 60 to 70 turns if we made the grow like if we made the population as low as physically possible um and then it would just be towns after that so do let me know what you think also i've just seen that the bloody linden are attacking dunland and they are right there and that's not going to do us any favors also i'm drinking blackcurrant juice and i really don't like blackcurrant juice um but it's better than orange and better than lime so i'm stuck with it uh right so to the rest of our campaign then we're doing all right um we are losing money yes um However, that money will be regained reasonably quickly-ish um, with the taking of Knock for a Claw. And on. Uh, so, fingers crossed on that. Additionally, something I wanted to say, um, and possibly shouldn't, but will anyway. And not, not shouldn't on YouTube, I'm sure there's no problem. And that is that a lot of people are experiencing crashes. Uh, crashes with the game that are random, there's no real way around them, you can't understand why. And as you've seen from most of my Let's Plays, all of my games are really quite stable. I get maybe one crash every 50 turns or so, which is the expected amount for a mod. Um, but if you're experiencing a lot of crashes, there is something called a Large Address Aware Patch, which is set to enable the executable of Medieval 2 to use more than the prescribed 2 gigabyte limit that the game currently uses. Of RAM, I should say. So if you've got a computer that has more than six gigabytes of RAM and you're experiencing these crashes, do consider turning large address aware on. Uh, so you just download the patch. You, it's a very, very basic thing. You turn it on for the executable and that should resolve some of your problems. That really should resolve some of your problems. I know quite a few cases on Total War Center where it has completely resolved their problems. But of course, as I've already mentioned, on Total War Center, you're not actually allowed to talk about the large address aware patch. So. Uh, and I can tell you legally exactly why this is. And this is because in the terms of service for um, Total War Center under, I want to say paragraph nine, I can't remember, I was reading it at work. Um, it does say that promoting illegal activity is a prohibited act under Total War Center and will be shut down in all cases and all locations and all forms. And then you'll be met with their warning process or whatever if you continue to pursue these uh, deemed illegal activities or promoting of said illegal activities. Uh, and the reason that this is an illegal activity is because under the end user license agreement of Medieval 2 on Steam, and indeed if you just have it normally, um, there is a section, again I'm afraid I can't remember the actual name of the section, but that's irrelevant for this, just know that it is there, that expressly prohibits the use of the game, any software within the game engine, i.e. the editor, that is then used to modify any of the game's executables. And that is the restriction. And so Total War Center deeming obviously modifying executables an illegal activity subject to the EULA of Creative Assembly, thus stamps out all talk of editing the executable. And now that's not because morally they consider it right, because every single person and his dog knows that the large address aware does nothing but resolve problems. Sins of a Solar Empire and Mass Effect, I think number two I've read, or possibly number three, they actually, they almost 100% need large address aware or the mods just do not work. So, and... Even And in fact, even Blizzard, um, who obviously aren't Creative Assembly, but uh, I was always going to auto-resolve these, sorry. I was never really that bothered, so I'm quite pleased that he's won that. But uh, And Blizzard actually released a statement a couple of years ago, I think, in fact, specifically saying that they would not pursue cheating or anything like that, um, any of their kind of cheating rules, to anyone found to be using Large Address Aware. And indeed, they would not shut down on the use of Large Address Aware because they appreciate that it is an incredibly useful tool. Now, Creative Assembly have never said that. They've never come out and said, yeah, feel free to use Large Address Aware. But equally, I can't imagine they're going to take any legal action against anyone who actually uses Get Large Address Aware. 
Uh, and this is because whilst it does modify the executable, it doesn't really, it doesn't do anything major. It literally just turns on, a, it's like in a bare bones way of making this make sense. It literally just turns on something that was previously turned off that allows the executable to, to process as it were, for again, incorrect but basic terms, to process more than two gigabytes of RAM. Uh, and they, they call it a flag, so it just sets a certain flag as being on or like active, and that flag allows it to use more than four gigabytes of RAM. So it would be an interesting argument to see if it actually does count as modifying the executable, because in, realistically, yes, it does. Or I suppose uh, de jure, yes, it does. Legally, yes, it does. But in fact, de facto, it's... Well, no, it's the other way around. I suppose, in fact, it does modify the executable in the raw terms of what modifying means. But could you legally say that it's maybe not as bad as they're suggesting? Anyway, that's all by the by. It probably is outright wrong, but I can't imagine oh in a month of Sundays that CA yes. would ever... Oh, Dominion's been destroyed. Uh, that CA would ever pursue legal action against someone who turned on large address aware. But, of course, Total War Center cannot be seen to be promoting anything deemed as illegal because they, as a, a sort of holding, not holding company, because they're not a com not company, but they, as a forum, a public forum, if they were seen to be promoting this, it would be so much easier for Creative Assembly to bring legal action against Total War Center and win than it would be to hunt down every individual member that uses large address aware. So Total War Center have to be incredibly strict on this because they're just an easier target. And that's all it is. For those of you who are looking at the world every day through rose-tinted glasses, uh, I'm afraid that having studied law and now indeed being a paralegal, I can tell you that everything that we do in this world is purely so that we don't get sued. That is it. All of the information on um, anything that's related to safety, nobody cares about you. Now, I'm just going to put that out there right now. Not a single person really cares about you. They don't make you wear hard hats at construction sites for your safety. They don't make you wear gloves for your safety. They don't make you drive at 30 miles an hour for your safety. They do all of this so that they can't be sued. And um, that is how the world works. So um, if you're unaware of that fact, I feel like um, we've naturally come to that point And I can now tell you that. So... Um, now, obviously, the driving limit, that's government ordained. So that possibly could be for the government trying to protect its citizens. So that one, maybe. The government does want to keep its citizens alive, you might hope. But um, like individual company policies are all just so that they don't get sued. Um, so, But then I can't imagine any of you really do have any, uh, have any notion that they actually care. Uh, it, it, you must realise it's all just for their protection. Um, and that's the same with Total War Center. That's why you can't talk about large address aware. And that was seven minutes of me talking about some legal nonsense. I realize also all I've done is end the turn. But that's because that's all we can do. I don't want to unnecessarily lose any troops. And I'm, I'm not going to attack Arquette because it will get a garrison. And we just don't want to be causing any problems there. So now we wait. Oh, we just got one extra gold coin thanks to that diplomat. Look at them all trying to bribe us, left, right and centre. But they should all be concerned. If Darwinian's just been destroyed, then Rune are doing very well. Which brings us on to another topic that we can ramble on about, and that is Rune. Um, my Woodland Realm campaign has brought into sharp um, relief the fact that Rune are possibly the game's most powerful AI nation in the, end, in the late game. They start in a totally safe location... Dorwinian can't hope to beat them. Dale have such a long and thin um, nation that they don't really prioritise shipping troops down to the front lines with Rune, so they end up not doing very well against them at all. And whilst the dwarves will hand Rune their ass time and time and time again, Rune have the numbers and the money in the late game to totally offset um, the dwarves' natural auto-resolve advantage. Ah, oh, look, Bree has just dropped all of its troops out. I wonder where they've gone. Two turns on both of them. In two turns, not only is the faction leader of Bree going to die, but they're going to lose Arquette and Nofra Claw. Although I could really do with getting rid of these buggers. But the only way to get rid of diplomats now is to try and bribe them. Or, and that's it. You can't kill diplomats in the way you could kill spies and assassins by surrounding them. Um, so what I'm hoping to try and do is, uh, apologies, uh, you may have noticed that I'm trying to talk as much as I can to cover the fact that this has been about 15 minutes of ending turn. 
Uh, but what I'm trying to do is think up ways to limit Rune's power. And now what we don't want to do is do that by making Dorwinian stronger because the problem is it is quite tricky to make things happen for the AI and not the human player. So it can be quite difficult to make Dorwinian strong for the AI but not strong for a human. Now, one way we could possibly could do that is adding in bigger garrison scripts for Darwinian only for the computer. You can also give the computer more money than you can give a human player. So we could try and make Darwinian stronger. But at the end of the day as well, you do want one or two nations to be strong. Like, if Rune aren't powerful, then the dwarves aren't tested and they wipe out the Misty Mountains. If Dale don't have to fight against the Easterlings, then they take on Dol Guldur and they easily beat Dol Guldur with the help of the Woodland Realm. So with Rune being too weak, the balance in the whole um, Ravanian region shifts massively. Ready. And all of a sudden, you've got good nations winning this every way. single time. with a No challenge, right essentially. There. So it's a real balance. Right, here we go. We're on the last end turn and we might get a battle. And if not, we'll... Yay! We do get a battle. So there you go. <laughs> I'm pleased at this. Ah, oh, Axe Guard are coming in. We've got some Axe Guard. Nothing really that strong. That army is really, really weak, isn't it? But Perry the Kind's getting involved. And he's just bringing some Band of Brass. Uh, Theodore the Honourable, we already know about. Because you're in the town itself. With farmhand units only. And Captain Arnie. So many hobbits. It's because all they've got left is the Shire now that um, we did a little number on Breather. So who's actually attacking us? Which one's Captain Harry? That one. So, they're going to be three coming from essentially in front of us and one coming from behind. Very well. Very well indeed. Uh, total change of subject. I was worried that my new job was going to massively Im impact my recording schedule, but in actuality, I don't think it will impact it at all. Um, that Well, it will impact it sometimes. There will be some occasions where I work late or I'm required to go to some of our drop-in clinics that the company does, the firm does, sorry. You tend to call lawyer firms firms, even though it really is a company. Uh, well, it's not. It's a, it's a limited liability partnership, actually, but I won't bore you with all of that, sorry. Um, but So I may be required to go late some days, and on those days, therefore, the video will be affected, if recorded at all. But on those days, I'd always try and get the video in somewhere else. Um, we know that the guy coming from behind isn't very good, so perhaps we should just set up on the hill and take the fact that we'd be surrounded. Uh, so, and But then the other thing is, because I live so close to where I now work, 15-20 minute drive each morning and each night, uh, 15 minutes on a good day, 25 on a bad, um, which is really good, let's be honest. Um, I don't think it's actually going to impact me at all. I get home about 6 o'clock each evening, so uh, there shouldn't be any, any concerns, which is good for those of you who watch me religiously. Although I was looking at my stats, and I have a 50% average view time, which is incredible, absolutely incredible. People still, to this day, manage to astound me. Surely I'm not that good. I don't, I don't know. Why do you like me all so much? But well, obviously I'm eternally, eternally grateful for your interest and ongoing interest. Uh, it's, it's all just Dak really, isn't it? It's all just going to... The minute I step away from Dak or the Dak stops, then it'll all just die with it. <laughs> and then my, the sadness will come out then. Right, I think you guys should be enough to deal with whatever comes the, over the back way. You're our best units really, aren't you? So, Right, so they are sending in Captain Arnie. Oh, nothing really. It's a couple of hobbits. We'll use our overwhelming numbers to get them anyway. I mean, it's good to get the general into a slightly easier battle, but getting him into battle is very good because he is powerful. Right, so coming in front of us is the weakling that was Captain Harry. Far away to our left is... Is that Theodore or Perry? That's Perry the Kind. So that means that far away to our right is Theodore, the gentleman who is in Arquette. There he is. So we're good to go. Give it a bit of a speed up. Zoom in. I will, as spoken of in the last episode, speed up a little less. Uh, the only thing that is going to be impacted by my working is that I now feel that my weekends mean a bit more than they used to, and I'm hoping to do more meaningful things with, uh, with Little Blue Ferret. Uh, we're hoping to go out more, just do more stuff. Um, 
And the weekend is primarily the only time that I ever record the lore videos. So at the moment, I cannot give you a time when I think the next lore video is going to be. I just can't tell you when I think that's going to be. So you just have to hang tight. I'm sure I will find a Saturday or a Sunday where I get a bit of extra time and I can squeeze if it in because it is due like around now. Smash the enemy. So stay tuned for this space. But it's very much a supply and demand thing. If I did the lore videos every single week, I think there would be an, a drop-off. There'd be a noticeable reduction in, in watch rates, as it were. Because you knew you were getting one every week. Um, by, by creating scarcity, I can drive the prices up and thus make them more... Uh, watchable in to, to bring that round to a normal topic. Right, there we are. Now our elites are going to crash into those watch sheriffs. And who's this coming in to flank from our behind? Turn and face. The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. How goes it with our line? Yeah, we're doing all right. Oh, have I got the catapult firing at something? Don't, actually. You've probably killed more of us without me noticing him. Captain Arnie's gone down. Oh, you absolute imbecile. Oh, for God's sake. You could try and shoot them, but that'd just be a waste of time. Hold on to your resources for now. We'll get something later. All right, okay. So the gentlemen that came in that way have been defeated, so... Let's move you guys around to deal with Theodore. Head up onto this point. Just walk slowly. No great rush now. Only half the enemy force remains. Oh, that's only merchant cavalry as well, actually. That wasn't even the general. There's the watchman axe guard. They just have cool axes and a shield. Although it's a two-handed axe, really, but they use it with one hand. <laughs> just because I like it a lot. And I think they do. As somebody, as somebody commented and said that the Watchmen do have that... They have that look that says, like, they're Bree's best units. But they also have a look of, like, only passable military... Like, they do kind of look like for people who have been given basic training. Dropped into chainmail. And sent out to battle. They don't have that professional, elitist look that the... Um, or elite look, rather, sorry. That the dwarves, or I'll say the Gondorian infantry have. They have a much more farmer look, much more rural look, but they still look better than Bree's. They still look more professional than Bree's basic units, their Bree land militia and whatnot. Right, they're coming into play up there. As soon as you can. There you go, try to start shooting them. Um, I'll tell you what, let's send you and you that way, and you three, and those orc fellas, you could move to there. Oh, good shot, catapult. A bloody blinding shot, actually. That was oh, my word. Go on, please get a good one. Oh, and the pikemen die. There is a sort of release in playing as evil. You can kill off all of these human units and just feel good about it. Whereas when you play as a good nation, you kind of align yourself to good, don't you? You start thinking like, oh, we don't want to kill too many. Like, after all, we're all here fighting against Sauron. Kill as many orcs as you want. Like, I have no remorse with orcs whatsoever. But anything else, you feel like they... Well, Faramir sums it up, doesn't he, when he says you wonder if they're really evil at heart. And what threats. Oh, sent them marching so far from their homeland. Uh, which is what he says about the Haradrim warrior he shoots. Of stir, uh, in the chapter of Herbs and Stewed Rabbit in the book. Goblin Bad, turn and face. Those cavalry are going to ruin you. Oh, okay, indeed. There's the general, because he's got a cape and he's got a more flowery hat. Victory will be ours. <laughs> Another good kill. Well done. Oh no, stop firing now. Right, you are dying, yes, but the general's got there to support you. Um, okay, so now we've just got to use this army in some meaningful way. So 
So we want some flankers. What's going on over here then? Uh, both of the Breland bodyguards hitting you. Yeah, they are. Wow, oh, we don't have anything really we can use at the moment. No, I told I held shift. I told you to move around. Oh, I'm holding space. Oh, for God's sake. Idiot. There we are. So how are the firehand bite me doing? Oh, they are going down hard. Fighting to the death is is arguably worse than just running away. Like well, no, it's not. But it does mean that whoever they are, they lose all of their normal combat abilities. Only half the enemy force remains. Oh, look, there's some Breland really bodyguards we can support there. <laughs> We're doing remarkably well. 17%. There we are. Perry the Kind's dead. Now we just need uh, Theodore to go down. Theodore, my friend, your time has come. Oh, there's all fellas I forgot about out there. Is he running away, way? No. Away, way. <laughs> hey, you running away, way? Ah, oh, the goblin band. Bastards got them. Only half the enemy force. Oh, remains. look at that! Like popping a shield at the last moment. <laughs> He's trying to flank our weakened archers. He kind of got them. Capture him, capture him, capture him. Oh. Ah, it's over. We didn't get him. Oh, we totally did. He just ran straight back into us. Oh, what an idiot. And it's over. Clear victory. 368 losses. Killed over a thousand of them. Most kills go to Orc Marauders at 157. Orc Marauders at 205. He only killed 19 and he killed 136. <laughs> One of them is putting in overtime. And Arket falls. We are orchestrating. Wipe them out. Oh, but Sid, do you really want to test us after what's just happened here? 30 to 7, Sid. One last general arrives. Captain Willy. Oh, well, Captain Willy's got a baluster. 74 Greenway sentries and then all archers. That's going to be bloody annoying. But we will fight one more. Um, I didn't think he would attack. That's why I auto-resolved the Sid one. We probably shouldn't have auto-resolved the Sid one. We would have we would have lost an awful lot less than 227. But um, it was just... Um, I didn't think we'd get attacked again. So I thought I could then end the episode with just some city management. Right, let's have a bit more straightforward. Right, our biggest concern here is obviously the enemy cav. And they're going to flank like a mother trucker. So we just need to protect our flanks. Well, protect the archers. And we can quite easily do that. There we are. Come at me, bro. Now, what I really want you to do is to attack the baluster. Because you're the best thing to do that. Yes. Come on, more accurate, please. Turn off fire because it makes you a little less accurate. Oh, 
Oh! Hold on, why are you firing those? Uh, ugh, idiots. Any day, lads. They're not going to do it, are they? Alright then, alright then. Hold that, come off of that, come back to that, stop doing what you're doing, start shooting the Greenway sentries. move everyone out just to give those uh, units a bit more protection and I also don't think we're going to need the bodyguards back there so we'll get them forward so we can charge them out oh, you're so inaccurate you are so inaccurate <sighs> getting that no kills here oh we took another baluster out there uh, we're down to the, f the heads. And that's it. Ballister are out. The enemy's moving in. Very well. Is very much enough. Only half the enemy force remains. Oh, even the Greenway sentries are running away. The whole army's running away. That was over in seconds. We lost 10% thanks to their bloody arrow fire. Hold on, hold on. Everyone's running away, so why have we not yet won? But they are actually routing. Oh, it's because they came back to fighting, but yeah, there we are. Uh, so there we are. Very simple victory. Oh, look at that. That looks like the destruction of Mordor to me. Because those are the Towers of Teeth. What are they called? Something like Narkoth and Karkoth, I want to say. Can't remember. They are the two towers next to the Black Gate. We've destroyed the enemy! Oh, Bree. Call it a day, friends. Call it a bloody day. If they had pulled all of this into one army, they would have been so successful. We would have been outnumbered. They would have had a general, Perry and Theodore, backing up. as Because Theodore wouldn't have been able to join the army, obviously. But the rest of them would have done. So they would have had a general. They wouldn't have had any of these problems. Not a jot. But as it stands, they are, in fact, coming at us in dribs and drabs, allowing our superior numbers to claim the day. And losing basically get as many as you can before you before they get a little too close oh a good shot on the Dunedain range so. oh that was an outrageous shot well done yeah, we've sent out the trash, basically, to deal with the... Suck up the uh, melee and deal with the shots of the Doom. Oh, another great shot. Sometimes the catapults can be just amazing. Sometimes they will waste every single shot. Like, practically right now. Oh, that was a good one. Oh, they're all grouped together. They're in a perfect... Ah, oh, the enemy general just fell. Now we're just killing our own. The battle is very much only half the enemy force remains. Oh, look at that. Perfect catching them as they ran away. So are you actually running now, Dunedain? Yeah, you are. So now we've just got to sit and wait as they run away again. How many did we lose that time? 6%. And whoever this was, was it Captain Archie, I think? He is now also dead. Captain Howie! Our catapults are doing well. Well done. <laughs> Grim. 
good I am. Ah, and it's over. 74 losses. Catapults killed 67. Ah, Catapults, in fact, killed the most. <laughs> well done. <laughs> That's an artist's impression of a troll, as you can see, stabbing Frodo. That's obviously the artist's impression of the movie, because that looks like Elijah Wood, and that looks like the troll from the movie. And we finally got Arquette. Yes. And not for a claw without a fight. Oh, dear, Bree. Bree have just been dealt an absolutely monolithic blow. The only thing worse than what's just happened is was our capture of Bree some turns ago. Oh, look at them all trying to bribe us. Although if we defeat the Northern Dunedain, that diplomat will disappear, so... At least there's that. There's no way to speed up their animation. That's the problem. If that animation happened just as quickly as everything else happened, there wouldn't be a problem. But the animation always goes slowly and the game always slows down to watch them play out the whole bowing, handing the scroll forward. And all it means is they're trying to bribe you. That's literally all that means. So if you've got a load of diplomats doing that, they're trying to bribe you. And every time your town or your general, whatever it is, is rejecting them. Oh, does that mean Lothlorien's now also dead? Oh, no. Kand and the tribes of Harad are now at war with the Dunlendings. That means we can't be allied to the Kand or the tribes of Harad. Right, well, we can't use the Dunedain outpost. And even though it gives those two things, we can't actually... Oh, the yeah, the generals. Mm, yeah, maybe we will hold on to that then, because it is better than not having it. I think we can use everything else, though. Ah, Master Shear of Skill means nothing to us. Get rid of that. There's a blacksmith here. And there we are. We're now making money. Uh, thanks to our capture of our cat. I respect and there's the army coming out enemy. to retake Get ready for fighting. Will it succeed? Hell no. Leave behind a unit of goblins. And move out together. Nothra Claw is really, really wealthy. Try and build roads there as fast as you can. Get that involved a bit more. Athelin. Can't get anything there, but it's about to be a bigger town. Uh, now, the temptation here is to then attack Bree with the Arquette army, but I don't think I will. We will we will wait for Zaka and Yaka, and we will avoid Amunsul, because it is, as I've already just mentioned, a useless village. So instead, we'll take Bree straight out from underneath them. Um, but do queue up a few more things here, because otherwise these places are about to be sniped. So when you can train a few more things, please do. And I'll send some to Fornost as well. So how goes it? Hurry up! This way. Stay right there. Not successful yet, I don't think. Stay right Mordor are liking me. Um, I suppose we could actually join in, could we? Do we take that decision? Ah, no, we didn't join in time. Balls. And that means they won't like us as much. Our standing with the Dark Lord will be a bit lower. Oh no, they do like us. They like us a lot. But we didn't join the invasion. Hmm. Interesting. Anywho, I'll end that one there. So this campaign, I think, is now going to be almost like an avalanche to victory. The, the invasion is keeping Ling Linden busy. And whilst it won't trouble them, Linden will beat back every army that comes. It's at least making them focus on their homeland a bit. And we are about to take Bree out, let's be honest. The Bree landers don't really stand a chance. Um, the army that was in Bree is either defeated invasion armies that have walked through or has been sent at us in dribs and drabs. And either way, we are now, what, probably four fighting. turns? We have completed One, two, three, four. Yeah, on the four. end of the fourth turn, our armies will arrive to attack Bree. We'll have a big standoff. It oh, Rich is probably the army that was in Bree, you. isn't he? Let us oh, look, and there's the new faction the of battle. Councilman Ash. But either way, we're doing okay. And that is still held by the Orcs, of, the Orcs of the Misty Mountains. So we're not losing out in the east just yet. So I can end it there. We've started making money. We've got some new provinces back. We're doing okay. So thank you very much for watching, if indeed you have. Do stay tuned for tomorrow where we will play as Gondor. And um, But until we speak again, dear friends, remember the poll and Navarre and the Den Perimad Melunin. And farewell. <laughs>